Boeing 737 was descending two times faster than the normal descent. Think break. Think break. Think break. Think break. Despite the calls from the first officer to go around and a number of warnings from ground proximity warning system, the aircraft got stuck, leaving 5,200 feet of the runway behind. Overshoot the runway and it's straight. Hit the boundary fence and fell into a gorge, killing 158 of 166 people on board. May 2010 Dubai International Airport, United Arab Emirates Air India Express Flight 812 was operating its scheduled flight from Dubai to Mangalore with its aircraft Boeing 737-800. Including four cabin crew and two pilots, there were 166 occupants on board. The captain of the flight was Zlatko Glusika, who was 55 years old, with 10,215 hours of flying experience, including 2,844 hours on Boeing 737-800. First officer was Harbinder Singh Aluwalia. He was 40 years old and had 3,620 hours of flying experience, including 3,319 hours on Boeing 737-800. The flight started its takeoff roll from Dubai International Airport nine minutes before the scheduled departure time. Flight attendants, please prepare for takeoff. Takeoff, climb, and cruise were uneventful. The crew contacted the Mangalore area controller on frequency 127.55 MHz and reported that they are over the Ikama waypoint and flying at flight level 370. Since 20 May, the Mangalore area radar was unserviceable and the crew were informed about this. Inside the cockpit, the first officer was making all the calls and it seems that he was only one to active among two crew. Because when the investigators heard the cockpit voice recorder which indicated that there was no conversation between the two pilots for the first one hour and 40 minutes of recording. And the captain was asleep with intermittent sound of snoring, deep breathing, and towards the end of this period, sound of clearing throat and coughing. Then the crew requested for descent clearance, but was denied by the ATC controller to ensure safe separation with other air traffic. When the aircraft was ATDME, the crew reported their position, which was instructed by Mangalore Area Control before. Then the ATC cleared the flight to descend to 7,000 feet. The visibility in that time was 6 km. Mangalore Airport has a tabletop runway, 
with landing approaches presented with the extreme edges of a hillside with elevation of 101.629 meters above the sea level. So Air India Express had made a special qualification requirement that only the captain shall carry out takeoff and landing in this airport. Among the crew of Flight 812, Captain Glusika had made a total of 16 landings in the past at this airport and first officer had operated as a co-pilot on 66 flights at this airport in the past. The cockpit was silenced. There was no recorded conversation regarding the mandatory preparation for descent and landing briefing. The Mangalore area controller cleared the aircraft to continue descent to 2,900 feet. But the aircraft was much higher than normally expected altitudes. The aircraft was then handed over by the Mangalore area controller to ATC Tower. The ATC thereafter asked the crew to report after establishment on 10 DME arc for ILS runway 24. Now the captain had realized that the aircraft altitude was higher than normal. The aircraft continued to be high and did not follow the standard procedures of intercepting the ILS glide path at the correct intercept altitude. These incorrect procedures led to the aircraft being at almost twice the altitude as compared to a standard ILS approach. Now the captain disconnected the autopilot and increased the rate of descent to establish on the desired approach path. However, the first officer did not appear to take any action to initiate a go around. The captain increased the rate of descent to almost 4,000 feet per minute. The pilots did not report having establishment on ILS approach. Instead, the ATC tower asked the crew. To this call, the captain forced the first officer to give a call of affirmative. Then ATC gave landing clearance. The aircraft was at an altitude of 200 feet when it crossed the runway threshold with a speed of 160 knots, where it should add an altitude of 50 feet with a speed of 144 knots for the landing. Despite the ground proximity warning system and calls from the first officer to go around, the captain had persisted with the approach in unstabilized conditions. The aircraft overshoot the runway, including the strip of 60 meters. After overshooting the runway and strip, the aircraft continued into the runway in safety area of 90 meters. The right wing impacted the localizer antenna hit the boundary fence and fell into the gorge. Due to impact and fire, the aircraft was destroyed. 152 passengers and all six crew members lost their lives.
The investigation was done by Ministry of Civil Aviation, India. According to the investigators, the cause of this accident was captain's failure to discontinue the unstabilized approach and his persistence in continuing with the landing despite three calls from the first officer to go around and a number of warnings from ground proximity warning system. In spite of availability of adequate rest period prior to the flight, the captain was in prolonged sleep during flight, which could have led to sleep inertia. As a result of relatively short period of time between his awakening and the approach, it possibly led to impaired judgment. This much for today. If you are watching until now, then please support us by liking the video and by subscribing the channel. I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.